Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Blaine Fontaine, and today we're going to be doing another Deadly Brew. This time we're talking about the super cool Torsten. Torsten? Torsten? One of those. He is a 100% creature deck, not a 99% creature deck, and then you run Primal Surge. No, this is 100% creatures and lands. Torsten is a 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven legendary creature human soldier for 5 white and a green. When Torsten, founder of Benalia, enters the battlefield, reveal the top 7 cards of your library, put any number of creatures and or lands from among them into your hand, the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. When Torsten dies, create 7 1-1 one, one white soldier tokens. The goal of this deck is to ramp into Torsten very quickly by dumping our hands with a bunch of mid to low range creatures. And then once Torsten enters the battlefield, we'll draw seven cards. Now, he says you only get creatures and lands. Well, we are only creatures and lands. So we're just going to get the top seven cards of our deck into our hand every time he enters the battlefield. You're out of gas. Boom, Torsten. Now you're not. Now you got a bunch of lands and a bunch of dudes you can play. What's that? They killed Torsten? Okay. I did seven one ones and then a couple more turns I'll play him and draw seven more cards. It's a win-win. Either they remove Torsten and you're able to constantly draw seven, or they leave him there and then you blink him. Which means you get to draw seven. And you get to keep your board. Also, a 7 7 commander is no slouch. Three taps from that, and you are out commander damage wise. First thing we're going to talk about is ramping into Torsten. 7 mana is quite a bit. So we have plenty of low to the ground guys that add mana to ramp out our commander quickly which by the time we've ramped him out, we've probably run out of cards in hand. That's fine. He kind of gives us a new one. Things like Lana War Elf, Elvish Mystic, you know, Avacyn's Pilgrim, any, any kind of low mana, add a mana guy. Probably the most important thing to this deck, other than the blinking, which we'll get to, is the discounters. Because your entire deck is creatures, creature discounters that are creatures are extremely, extremely valuable. Things like Cemetery Prowler, which when it enters it can hit a creature from anyone's bin, or any card really, but it, we want to hit a creature, so our creatures always cost one less. He can also progressively and constantly hate on graves, which is always good. We have Ezra Root Channeler, which it itself is quite a bit of mana. But if you have no other way to gain life, it can still tap, gain you two life, and then all of your creatures cost two less for the entire turn. That's pretty strong. And again, we have other ways to gain a bunch of life. Nylia Keenite is an indestructible discounter, which can also fill for us into more creatures and more cards if we have nothing else to do with our mana. And finally, the coolest of all of them, Centaur Omen Rider reader one of those something you've probably never seen if you can get them tapped through either attacking or other means he just discounts your entire creature base by two and he's much much cheaper than Ezra the Channeler this will allow you to poop out your commander quickly and everything he draws you also quickly just bam 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 dudes constant and that's what we want. Blinking is very important for our commander. It's how we get consistent value out of him. Things like Angel of Condemnation can blink him every turn. Charming Prince blinks him once. Distinguished Conjurer can gain you a bunch of life and blink him every turn. 
at instant speed, which is very nice. Flicker Wisp enters the battlefield and blinks him. Restoration Angel enters the battlefield and blinks him. Then we have additional blink payoffs, such as Preston and Panharmonicon, or Elish Norn. These will effectively double our ETBs. If Torsten enters while Preston is out, we'll get two Torstens. We'll keep our original. Our copy will die the Legend Rule, which will make us seven one ones and draw seven cards. Pretty good. Whereas Elish Norn will simply just double up and make us draw 14. Pretty rad. If you got them both, ooh lordy, they are in for some trouble. It's very likely that we will have extra lands in our hand due to us drawing so many cards from this crazy boy. So we have extra land droppers. Wayward Sword Tooth, Dryad of Elysian Grove, and Azusa all do pretty much the same thing with Azusa doing it a smidgen better, letting us drop additional lands per turn. You can also use Oracle of Moldiah, but I felt like the three were sufficient for my current build. Now I hear you say, we're Selesnya, and we're all creatures? How are we supposed to interact and blow up their stuff? Well, there's Thorn Mammoth, which is an actual unit. It is a 6-6 that fights something when it or something else enters. If Torsten dies, that's six fights. Be careful not to let him die, but he can punch a lot of stuff on the way out. Oh, well. <laughs> Larry, what the hell are you doing? Oh, Larry! Larry, you can't just... Oh, Larry! Oh, are you all right? How did you... Larry! Duplicant is just exile a creature whenever it enters a battlefield. If our opponent's got something crazy that's indestructible, well, not anymore. Kogla can fight something when it enters. It can protect itself, even by bouncing Torsten and letting us replay him for seven more cards. It can also destroy an artifact or enchant it just by swinging. The Knight of Autumn is a Rexage. Rexage is a Rexage. Lauren is a Rex Sage. And of course, Druid of Purification is a cool Rex Sage. Null Mage Mentor is a great way to constantly sweep all of our opponent's artifacts and enchantments, keep them nice and clean. Silverback Elder also does the same. And Saw Tusk. Saw Tusk? Demolish. Demolish. Oh my god. Saw Tusk. Demolisher is a beast within. Also, it turns one of our creatures into a 6 6 trample, you know. Little victories. But our big oof is Bane of Progress, which destroys all artifacts and enchantments. Since we're only creatures, that's not our problem. It might hit our Dryad, or it might hit our Duplicant. Oh well. But it does sweep all of their stuff and doesn't even hurt us probably one of the only decks where Bane of Progress is a one-sided board wipe. That being said, we do have a few instant sorceries in this deck. But Blaine, they're all creatures. That's true. These instant sorceries are also creatures. We have adventures with Giant Killer being able to just snipe a big threat whenever he wants at instant speed and then later gets played as a tapper. Can be good for getting through. Pegasus Guardian has an adventure on it that'll let it just blink a creature, which is perfect for Torsten, especially because we're not allowed to run instant sorceries here. So this is a great way to have Torsten see it as a creature, but just cast as an instant sorcery, then later as a creature. It can also poop out 1-1 flyers every turn, which is not nothing with how wide we go. And finally, the best board wipe you're going to get with only creatures. Realm Cloaked Giant can destroy all non-giant creatures. Yes, that does include our stuff, but we're so creature-heavy that it's very unlikely that our opponent has a 
better board state of creatures than us, so we don't need too many creature wraths. Our other, if you want to squint really hard, uh, board wipe in this deck would would have to be Apex Altrasaur, which when it enters it fl fights something, and then when that thing dies it fights something else, and it fights something else. It uh, it typically sweeps all of the little neutral minions away from the board, and if you really need to get rid of that big scary thing, it can fight that too. Now, don't you suffer greatly to board wipes like Wrath of God because you're all creatures? No. Let me show you why. We have Dauntless Escort. Sacrifice it. Give the team indestructible. Plain and simple. Selfless Spirit does the exact same thing. And Guardian of Faith, when it enters, lets us phase out any number of other dudes. Perfect for those pesky board wipes. But the coolest of all is Glorious Protector, which we can foretell, make it a little cheaper. It, when it enters, it gets to eat all of our stuff in an O-ring effect, exiling it under itself. Then when the wrath happens, all your stuff gets to re-enter the battlefield, which is fantastic for Torsten. You know, so you can draw seven cards. Again. Almost all of these are recurrable at instant speed with Order of the White Clay, which can grab Selfless Spirit, Guardian of Faith, Dauntless Escort, everything but Glorious Protector, and just smack it on the board for free and, uh you know, protect again. As well as Sun Titan can also grab them, but White Clay being able to do it at instant speed, it's pretty cool. Now we have all these creatures, but our opponents have blockers. How do we win, you might ask? Well, there's always the easy out of Crater Hoof Behemoth or in race Forerunners, but I don't think we want to go that way, especially because Crater Hoof is boring. Sorry, I'll be the one to say it. A little too strong for my taste. I like to earn my wins. So we have goofy ones like Jazal, which is a Johnny's brother, and effectively does Crater Hoof for attackers. But it's repeatable. It doesn't get trampled. More fair, but still, still probably dead. Soul of Theros, however, is a whopping six mana for a body and then another six mana per pump to give our entire team plus two, plus two lifelink at first strike. Which, this is quite a lot of mana for a simple plus two, plus two, but we don't have a ton of life gain in this deck, so it's great to gain a billion life and catch right back up early game, mid game, or even just finish people off late game. Despite it being an absurd amount of mana, it is a, a good way to spend all those extra land drops and all those mana dorks on something that's efficient that ends the game. But the coolest kid in all the land, the Giga Chat of our deck, is Myljan of Life's Web. We're drawing a lot of creatures, and a lot of them have a lot of mana to cast. So it's pretty great to simply just pay eight for this cool kid, blink Torsten one or two times, and just put them all on the battlefield for free. If we have Reliquary Tower out, we can wait until our opponent's instep and surprise them with a gigantic board of heinous nonsense. But if we don't, pooping out all of our stuff and just keeping up mana for one of our anti-wrath cool kids that I mentioned earlier is also a fantastic way to go. The strength of this deck is definitely its speed, its resilience, and its ability to just churn out value constantly from turn one onwards, honestly. It's just a non-stop stream of value. And drawing seven cards every single time our commander enters is ridiculously powerful. But it's not perfect. 
it does have its weaknesses. Mass Exile board wipes, like Farewell for instance, we only have a couple of cards that can deal with that. And if they're exiled with Farewell, we can't get them back and do it again. However, if we do wind up being subject to a board wipe, it really, really hurts us. Again, we can just drop our commander and draw a new seven cards and just keep playing. So it's not the worst. Things like humility, however, just make us lose. Hopefully your opponents aren't playing humility into your goofy 100% creatures deck, because that would be freaking rude. In conclusion, Torsten is awesome. You can kind of build him however you want. I built a very defensive deck that prevents itself from getting board wiped very easily. It has a ton of recursion, like Eternal Witness, Timeless Witness, Skullwinder. Lots of ways to get your things back so that you can keep protecting your board over and over again because Wraths suck. And this is a perfect way to avoid them. Check out my list in the description below if you're looking for something cool. And you can pretty much just throw anything you want in there as long as you have those core cards I mentioned earlier. And just uh, experiment with what seems fun and take it from there. Later.